In Ocarina of Time, to get to the Shadow Temple, you're required to complete the Forest, Fire, and Water Temples so you can activate the cutscene to learn the Nocturne of Shadow to warp to the temple's entrance. However, there are ways to get into the Shadow Temple early. For this method, all you need is the Hookshot. Grab the Hookshot from Dampe's Grave. You can side hop out before the room closes to void out and get back to the graveyard entrance faster. Now that you have the Hookshot, it's time to get into the Shadow Temple. Line up on this back wall of Dampe's Hut, get into this corner and hold target, then side hop right, side roll, and hold forward to bonk. When you do, mash the Hookshot button. Link will begin pulling out the Hookshot and putting it away. The third time he does this, on this frame here, when his hat lines up with his shield, press Hookshot. Link will shoot the Hookshot and fly up into the air. Once he starts falling, hold back to land onto the ledge. To make walking on the ledge easier, we're going to get Infinite Sword Glitch, ISG, off the Poe to keep us from falling off. Stand above and face the Poe. In quick succession, crouch stab, target the Poe, and press C up to interrupt the stab. If you timed it right, Link's sword will still be swinging, and you will have ISG active. Now you can safely walk along the ledge towards the warp pedestal. Be careful at the corners though, as you could slip down them and get stuck. If you do, you can try to side hop or backflip onto a different spot to save yourself. Once you get to the end of the graveyard, you can enter Shadow Temple by one of two ways. If you have Din's Fire, you can open Shadow Temple as intended. If you don't want to do that, you can get to the center of this ledge here, and side hop past the stairs, jumping over a load trigger, letting you access the Shadow Temple without opening its door. Now that you're here, you can beat Shadow Temple without having any items like the Lens of Truth, Bow, Hammer, or Longshot. Progressing through the temple doesn't change much when you enter it early. Here's some ways to solve the rooms with your limited inventory. Getting to the hover boots without the Lens of Truth is simple enough, as the only other branching path leads to the dungeon map. When fighting Dead Hand, you can time a jump slash right before it dives to score another hit. To solve the Truth Spinner without the Lens, the correct placement can only be one of these back three. Pull the spinner counterclockwise twice and check if it's correct. If it's not, you can avoid falling into the pit below by side hopping out of the way or using the hover boots to walk over it. If you blow up the Bemo statue, you'll see that Navi turns green and flies to the center of this room. If you play the Song of Storms, you can spawn a big fairy. Big fairies are special in that they restore all of your magic and 8 of your hearts. Cool. Since we already used glitches to get into Shadow Temple, would you like to do an easy clip to skip most of it? In the Silver Rupee Room, at the bottom of it is a shortcut blocked off by a giant block which you pull away from the other side. You can clip through the bars with this setup. Line up in this corner, side hop left 3 times, do 2 targeted slashes stopped by shielding, do 1 more vertical slash without shielding, do a jump slash, and hold shield to stay in place. One last jump slash will put you past the bars. Congratulations, you can move the block into its resting spot to keep the shortcut open. After grabbing that key from the Silver Rupee Room, use it on the door hidden behind an invisible bumblebee wall to the Basement 2 hallway. You can do a few rolls, turn right, and toss a Deku Nut onto the wall to stun the three Skulltulas on your path. In this giant cavern room is a fork in front of you. The left side leads to a gold Skulltula, and the right side progresses on. Here are the invisible platforms on the left side. The room has an invisible spinning scythe in its center, its area marked on the floor. You can take out the keys with your hookshot. In this spot here with the Salphos, you'll notice that Navi turns green again. This is another spot you can spawn a big fairy. Here, play the Song of Storms, and you can spawn the big fairy. The Stone Umbrella Room is solved by pulling this block out from behind the invisible wall and using it to shield you from the falling spikes. There's other ways to get past this puzzle though. One option is to pull the block out only a little, then use a ground jump to climb up the block. Drop a bomb, then have your sword in hand and try to pick up the bomb while shielding. After it explodes, when Link does a backflip, he will hop upward, letting him grab the ledge. Another method involves this moving spike here. You can backflip onto the spike at the right moment and either clip through or get pushed onto the falling spike. If you want to show off to your friends, you can backflip directly under the spike as it's falling and clip through it to end up on top. Hit the switch and grab the key in the small chest. The next locked door is over there across the gap. There are invisible platforms here, one stationary and one moving. Here's what they look like. There's a couple ways to get through here. One way is to simply run at an angle towards the door and hope that you timed it right. Another method is to use the hover boots on the same path and float across the platforms. If you want to play it carefully, you can do targeted rolls to find the ledge, as Link will automatically grab the ledge when he finds it. Then, use the Hookshot's crosshair to see when the moving platform is close. You can observe the timing of its movement and use it to judge when to jump across. Now, unlock that door. This Silver Rupee Room has invisible spikes on the floor, in green, and Hookshot targets on the walls, in blue. Aim here to climb on top of the invisible platform and either jump slash or use hover boots towards this one ruby to collect it. After collecting the rupees, the door on the left will open. Before entering it, if you have Aurora's Wind, 
You can set it here to save some time coming up. This room has a skull that you need to toss an explosive into to get to the key that's inside. There's bomb flowers to use up top, or you could throw your own bombs instead. With good timing, you can even use a bomb tree directly on the vase and have it blow up as it touches its base, counting for the puzzle. To open the door out, defeat every enemy. Since we set Ferora's Wind in the last room, we can use it to get out. The way forward is up on that high ledge with the locked door. The hookshot target to get up there is intended to be reached with a long shot, but since we haven't been to the water temple, our hookshot won't reach it. Thankfully, backflipping onto this small chest gives us the height that we need to reach the target with the hookshot. The next room has wind fans that will push you away. There's optimized movement to get through here in one cycle, but I did not practice it, so I will have Link run in place as he faces hurricane force winds. In the room beyond the narrow path with fans is a hint telling you to use the hover boots in the last room to progress, but you don't really need to. While we're here, we can play the sun song to spawn a big fairy. Back in the previous room, where this fan is, do a rolling jump off the ledge and hold forward until you hit the wall. Link just barely grabs the ledge, but he can make this jump without the hover boots. This next room has an invisible key chest hidden under the rubble in this corner. Use a bomb to blow it up, then get into the corner to open the chest. Open the locked door. Hey, we're back here again. We have taken the scenic route. You can push the block into place to climb the ladder, or you can jump from the ledge onto the boat's wheel and climb up it. Play Zelda's lullaby to start the ride. If you don't feel like fighting Stalfos, you can stand up on the back ledge, unable to be reached. The Stalfos will eventually fall off the boat this way. Jump off before the boat sinks. Across the void is the statue with bomb flowers you hit with an arrow to blow up and make a bridge. Since we don't have the bow from the forest temple and our other fire sources don't reach, we'll get creative with bomb shoes. Face the wall and slash it. Charge a spin attack and release it, shielding right after to lock the angle. This angle measurement is 2 ESS right. ESS is a small range on your analog stick just out of neutral where Link can turn around without moving. The smallest of these turns we can make is 1 ESS. Side hop right close to the ledge, then drop a bomb shoe to have it right along the wall. If aimed correctly, it hits the bomb flowers across the gap and blows them up, making the bridge. This room is a maze of invisible walls. Hug the right wall and you can get around easily. This room has a small key. Jump slash the invisible floor master to defeat it, and do a quick spin to defeat the three tiny ones it spawns. This room just has rupees and a gold skulltula and can mostly be ignored. This room has the boss key. To break the closing spike walls, you need to use Din's fire. However, you can also do this. Run towards the reed dead to get its attention, and keep jump slashing. If it freezes Link while he's in the air, Link will stay in place as the wall moves through him. When he unfreezes, he's on the other side of the wall. Hurry up and grab that boss key, because if the spike walls meet in the middle, Link gets voided out and you'll have to do it again. This room has invisible platforms to cross with the hover boots. Here's the layout of it. You can run forwards, aim left, then back right to cross it. Now to go fight Bongo Bongo. Bongo Bongo does not require the bow to defeat it. You can use your hookshot to shoot its hands and eye as it rushes at you. In fact, you don't even need anything other than your sword for this fight. You can do quick spins to hit the hands right before they attack you, then do a well-timed sword swing to hit Bongo Bongo's eye. Use the power of a 150 beat per minute rhythm to one cycle it with crouch steps. Collect your heart piece and enter the blue warp to complete the dungeon. Congratulations! You have completed the Shadow Temple before entering any of the other ones. We can check our inventory and see that we only have the Shadow Medallion collected here. Now go enjoy the hover boots in the previous dungeons. Neat!